lot of people here. Like last time, I think we were 19 or 20, so. <laughs> so um, today is our last class. And basically the class will be the same as the others with a Kahoot at the end, but today is our last class. So today's class is about heroes. Okay, so I'm just gonna start my shared screen. Okay. So we're going to start now. It's been three minutes. If other people are coming in, that's okay too. So like I said earlier, today's class is about heroes. So firstly, um, what we're going to talk about uh, in the beginning are like fabulous and monstrous creatures. And then we're going to talk about the heroes and the demigods. And then lastly, we're going to do a Kahoot. This will be our last Kahoot. Okay, so all the creatures that we're going to talk about today, like there are a few that will also be in the myths, but there are the Harpies, the Minotaur, the Sphinx, the Gorgons, the Chimera, and the Neeming Lion. So first of all, we're going to start with the Harpies. Harpies are creatures possessing the wing, a winged body of a bird and the head of a woman. They devour everything on their passage. Because the harpies punish people on the God's behalf, they are often called the hounds of Zeus, who, was, who is the king of the gods. So as we can see, they have wings and um, their body is like a woman. So the next one we're gonna talk about is the Minotaur. The Minotaur is a very famous creature, but uh, like we're gonna talk about it um, further in the presentation, I'm just gonna do a presentation of it now. So the Minotaur is a fabulous creature of Crete, which is like somewhere in um, next to Italy. It's like a little island that had the body of a man and the head of a bull. It was the offspring of Pasiphae, the wife of Minos, and a snow white bull sent to Minos by the god Poseidon for sacrifice. Minos, instead of sacrificing it, kept it alive. Poseidon, as a punishment, made Pasiphae, uh, Pasiphae fall in love with it. So over here you can see, this is the Minotaur. So its head is the head of a bull and its body is, is the uh, body of a man. And then we have the Sphinx. The Sphinx has the head of a woman, the hunches of a lion, and the wings of a bird. A hunch is like the body. And she is mythicized as treacherous and merciless and will kill and eat those who cannot answer her riddle. So um, in Greek and Roman mythology, she has this riddle that people have to answer. And that also um, happens in um, e e Egyptian culture, but the riddle is still the same. So here is the riddle. <clears throat> the riddle goes like this. What goes on four feet in the morning, two feet at noon, and three feet in the evening? I feel like now a lot of people know the answer to the riddle because it's very popular, but does anybody know? Yeah, Sophia said a person, exactly. That's the answer. So um, what goes on four feet in the morning? The morning means like um, the, the beginning of your life when you're a child. So you crawl on, your on four feet, uh, on like four legs, for example. At noon is when you're like a teenager, an adult. So you stand on your two uh, feet and in the evening, three feet means two feet and like a cane. Like a lot of old people, they need canes to walk. So that's the answer to the riddle. Mm. Okay. 
So, oops. Uh, okay. So the next creature we're going to talk about is the chimera. The chimera is a monstrous fire breathing hybrid creature composed of the parts of more than one animal. It is usually depicted as a lion with the head of a goat protruding from its back and a tail that might end with a snake's head. So right over here, it's a picture of the chimera. So here is the lion, the, the body of a lion too. And then from like somewhere on its back, there is the head of a goat. And then the tail ends with the head of a snake. So this is like a, a like a three in one hybrid. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about the gorgons. The gorgons are like very like very like one of them is very famous. We're gonna talk about its myth later. But the gorgon the gorgons are ugly monsters with sharp fangs and claws and body covered with dragon like scales. They had horrible grins, staring eyes, and writhing snakes from, for hair. Their gaze was so terrifying that anyone who looked upon them immediately turned to snow, stone. It was said that blood taken from the right side of one of the gorgons had the power to revive the dead, while blood taken from the left side would instantaneously kill any living thing. Two of the gorgons, st uh, Steno and Uriel were immortal, but Medusa was not. So Medusa is the popular Gorgon because there's like a whole myth about it. Um, does anybody have any questions? Okay. So the next um, creature we're gonna talk about is the Nemean lion. The Nemean lion is a vicious monster that lived at Nemalt and that could not be killed with mortal weapons because its fur, golden fur was imper, imper, impervious to attack. Its claws were sharper than mortal swords and could cut through any armor. So this is also a creature that we're going to talk about later. And we're also going to see how a hero cuts through its fur. If you guys want to think about it, maybe like, do you guys have any hypothesis or guesses on how um, the hero will cut um, the the lion's fur? Anybody have any guesses? He will shave it off. No, that's not. He crafts something through its eyes, maybe. Well. We're going to see later because if you think about it, it's actually pretty smart, but we'll see about it later. Okay, so the, uh, the hero myths that we're going to talk about today are the myth of Perseus, the myth of Theseus, the myth of Bellerophon, and finally the myth of the 12 labors of Heracles, or Heracles is the Roman name, but in Greek it's Hercules. So... First one is the myth of Perseus. So this is a very complicated myth and there's a lot of text. I'm gonna read it if you guys have any questions or um, any like things that you might not understand fully, just ask questions and I can do like a recap or any like answer your questions. Uh, and uh, Vivian Perseus is not Percy Jackson. They're, they're two different. Like in the, the movie, uh, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, um, Perseus, uh, Percy Jackson does like the, the same thing as Perseus, but in like Rome, Greek and Roman culture, it's not the same thing. So um, Polydectus, who fell in love with Danae, Danae is Perseus' mother, challenged Perseus to kill the fearsome Gorgon Medusa and bring back her head. By killing Medusa, Perseus would prove his braveness and fit uh, as fits to the son of Zeus. Polydectus was sure that Perseus would not survive this dangerous task, killing Medusa. So what Polydectus had not known was that Perseus was, the, was beloved by the gods. To help him, god Hermes gave him a 
curved sword and a pair of winged sandals, while Athena gave him a mirror of polished bronze and a cap from Hades that could make invisible uh, that could make invisible anyone who wear it. Indeed, found lying in her cave, since he was wearing the winged sandals, he could fly around her, and since he was wearing the magical cap of Hades, he was invisible. In order to uh, avoid looking Medusa directly in her face and thereby being turned into stone, Perseus approached Medusa, looking at her reflection in the mirror, and cut off her head with the sword of Hermes. So easily then, the brave and intelligent Perseus managed to complete this difficult task. So does anybody have any questions on this particular myth? No questions? Okay. So we're going to talk about the next one. The next one is the myth of Theseus. So, oh, I see someone. Okay, Sophia has a hypothesis or a guess that Hercules used its claws. We're going to see. So, the myth of Theseus is that in Athens, Athens, uh, the city was obliged to regularly send 14 of its noblest young men and women to Crete. Crete is, as I said earlier, like a place near Italy. It's a little island where each of them was de uh, destined to meet the same end, to be thrown in Diodalus's labyrinth and be devoured by the monstrous half-man, half-bull minotaur. So um, Theseus volunteered to go to Crete, where Ariand, uh, Minos's daughter, fell in love with him upon arrival. Determined to assist him, she begged Diodalus. So Diodalus is like the, the man who like constructed, constructed the labyrinth to tell her the secrets of the labyrinth, which eventually the old craftsman agreed to. So right over here, oops, sorry. I just don't want to go. Oops. Over here, you can see um, the, the labyrinth that was built around the mantor. So, and when the time came for Theseus to an enter the labyrinth, Arian gave him a ball of thread that was supposed to help him navigate himself inside the structure and guide him safely out of it. Comfort comforted by the fact that he would always be able to find his way out, Theseus delved deep into the labyrinth and found the minotaur hunting its in innermost depths. The minotaur was no match for Theseus' strength and determination. After a brief fight, the Athenian killed the monster and followed the thread back to safety. So that's what happened. We, I, like, there, we don't really know how he killed the minotaur. There are no specifics. But this is what like most like stories and legends say. So I'm not very sure. I'm not an expert either. Um, and so the interesting thing, like the ironic thing about this myth is that when Theseus left uh, Athens, his father um, asked him, to bring two um, sails. One sail was white and one uh, the other sail is black. So when uh, he asked him, if you return like safe and sound and alive, like change the sail to the white sail so that I can see from afar that you're still alive. And if um, the, the sail was still black, then he would know that Theseus was dead. And so when Theseus left, the sail was black. And when he came back, even though he was alive, he was so like wrapped up in celebrating, he forgot to change the sail into the white sail. So when his father from afar, he saw that the sail was still black, he threw himself off a cliff and died because he was so like, he thought that the the Theseus was dead. So he didn't want to live anymore. But when Theseus came back and realized that he didn't change the flag or the, the sail, he, he realized that that's why his father killed himself, which is very ironic, but that's what happens. 
So the next myth is the myth of Bellerophon. Bellerophon and Chimera. So Bellerophon was officially the son of King Gallus, but a rumor made him the son of Poseidon, the god of the sea. In visit to King Thynthe, the young man re refused the advances of the king, the queen, who falsely accused him of trying to seduce her. So King Thyrinth sent Bellerophon to Lycia, uh, which is also somewhere near Italy, asking him to give a letter to the sovereign of this country. And in this seal letter, King Thyrinth asked that Bellerophon was executed, something that the king couldn't do. He loathed the hero of a perilous mission, killing the chimera. Which was great, uh, which caused great ravages in his country. He was persuaded that the young man would find get death. So, Bellerophon consulted the uh, Devon Polidos. Polidos is like like a demigod, who advised him to spend the night in the temple of Athena, which he did. The goddess appeared in his dreams and told him about Pegasus, the winged horse born from Medusa's blood. She handed him a golden flange and told him where to find the wind courier. When he woke up, Bellerophon found the item next to him. Thanks to this gift, the hero managed to capture and tame the horse, the only creature fast enough to escape the flames of Chimera. He killed the monstrous creature by screening it with arrows from the top of the air. So since nobody could really approach Chimera because it had like heads everywhere. Like it had a head in the front, which is the head of a lion. It had the head on the top of its body, which is the head of a goat. And it had a head uh, in, um, behind him, which is the head of the snake. So nobody could really surprise Chimera. And um, all out of all three mouths, uh, Chimera was like breathing like fl flames. So that's how Bellerophon killed Chimera. No questions, okay. So the next um, myth that we're gonna talk about is the 12 labors of Hercules. So does anybody know about this myth? Because it's a very, very popular myth. Yes, no, Carol says no, no, okay. Okay, someone says yes. Two yeses, a lot of no's. Okay, that's okay. Well, we're gonna talk about it now. So as you can see in this picture, um, there are 12 little pictures. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So these are the 12 labors of Hercules that we're gonna see in the video. So. Let me just get out of this and then we're gonna see the video. Um, if anybody can't hear the video, just tell me so that I can um, I can re-screen share or something. So we're just gonna. Hercules, son of Zeus and champion of humankind, gazed in horror as he realized he had just committed the most unspeakable crime imaginable. The goddess Hera, who hated Hercules for being born of her husband's adultery, had stricken him with a temporary curse of madness and his own family were casualties. Consumed by grief, Hercules sought out the oracle of Delphi. So just to explain what happened, so um, Hercules killed his family. That's what the casualty means. I'm not sure if uh, like a lot of you understood. So that's what casualty means. Who told him the path to atonement laid with his cousin, King Eurystheus of Tyrides, a favorite of Hera's. Eurystheus hoped to humiliate Hercules with 10 <laughs> impossible tasks that pitted him against invincible monsters and unfathomable forces. Instead, the king set the stage for an epic series of adventures that would come to be known as the Labors of Hercules. The first labor was to slay the Nemean lion who kidnapped women and devoured warriors. 
its golden fur as impervious to arrows. But Hercules cornered the lion in his dark cave, stunned it with a club and strangled it with his bare hands. He found no tool sharp enough to skin the beast until the goddess Athena suggested using one of its own claws. Hercules returned to Tyrion's web. So, um, sorry for stopping the video, but Sophia was right. So he did use one of um, the Nemean uh, lion's claws to cut um, its fur. The lion's hide, frightening King Eurystheus so much that he hid in a wine jar. From then on, Hercules was ordered to present his trophies at a safe distance. The second target was the Lernaean Hydra, a giant serpent with many heads. Hercules fought fiercely, but every time he cut one head off, two more grew in its place. The battle was hopeless until his nephew, Yolas, fought to cauterize the necks with fire, keeping the heads from regrowing. The dead serpent's remains became the Hydra constellation. Instead of slaying a beast, Hercules next had to catch one alive. The Cyrenian hind was a female deer so fast it could outrun an arrow. Hercules tracked it for a year, finally trapping it in the northern land of Hyperborea. The animal turned out to be sacred to Artemis, goddess of the hunt, and Hercules swore to return it. When Eurystheus saw the hind, he demanded to keep it instead. But as soon as Hercules let go, the animal ran to its mistress. Thus, Hercules completed his task without breaking his promise. The fourth mission was to capture the Aramenthian boar, which had ravaged many fields. Advised by the wise centaur Charon, Hercules trapped it by chasing it into thick snow. For the fifth task, there were no animals, just their leftovers. The stables where King Orgeus kept his hundreds of divine cattle had not been maintained in ages. Hercules promised to clean them in one day if he could keep one tenth of their livestock. Orgeus expected the hero to fail. Instead, Hercules dug massive trenches, rerouting two nearby rivers to flow through the stables until they were spotless. Next came three more beastly foes each requiring a clever strategy to defeat. The carnivorous Stymphalian birds nested in an impenetrable swamp, but Hercules used a thin special rattle to frighten them into the air, at which point he shot them down. No mortal could stand before the Cretan bull's mad rampage, but a chokehold from behind did the trick. And the mad king Diomedes who had trained his horses to devour his guests, got a taste of his own medicine when Hercules wrestled him into his own stables. The ensuing feast calmed the beasts enough for Hercules to bind their mouths. But the ninth labor involved someone more dangerous than any beast, Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons. Hercules was to retrieve the belt given to her by her father, Ares, god of war. He sailed to the Amazon land of Themyscira, prepared for battle. But the queen was so impressed with the hero and his exploits that she gave the belt willingly. For his tenth labor, Hercules had to steal a herd of magical red cattle from Gerion, a giant with three heads and three bodies. On his way, Hercules was so annoyed by the Libyan desert heat that he shot an arrow at the sun. The sun god, Helios, admired the hero's strength and lent his chariot for the journey to the island of Erethia. There, Hercules fought off Gerion's herdsman and his two-headed dog before killing the giant himself. That should have been the end, but Eurystheus announced that two labors hadn't counted. The Hydra, because Yolas had helped Hercules kill him, and the stables, because he'd accepted payment. And so the hero set about his eleventh task, obtaining golden apples from the garden of the Hesperides nymphs. Hercules began by catching the old man of the sea and holding the shape-shifting water god until he revealed the garden's location. 
Once there, the hero found the Titan, Atlas, holding up the heavens. Hercules offered to take his place if Atlas would retrieve the apples. Atlas eagerly complied, but Hercules then tricked him into trading places again, escaping with apples in hand. The twelfth and final task was to bring back Cerberus, the three-headed hound guarding the underworld. Helped by Hermes and Athena, Hercules descended and met Hades himself. The Lord of the Dead allowed Hercules to take the beast if he could do it without weapons, which he achieved by grabbing all three of his heads at once. When he presented the hound to a horrified Eurystheus, the king finally declared the hero's service complete. After 12 years of toil, Hercules had redeemed the tragic deaths of his family and earned a place in the divine pantheon. But his victory held an even deeper importance. In overcoming the chaotic and monstrous forces of the world, the hero swept away what remained of the Titan's primordial order, reshaping it into one where humanity could thrive. Through his labors, Hercules tamed the world's madness by atoning for his own. Okay, so does anybody have any questions on the the Smith? It doesn't have any have to be any questions. Do you like like which one is your favorite? Which one do you think is like the coolest? Which one do you think is like the most impressive? Anybody want to share? Okay, so. Yeah, at the end, he did do 12 um, labors. So in the beginning, it was only supposed to be 10 of them. But since um, the king like said that one of them didn't count because um, he, was, he had help and the other one didn't count because he accepted payment, he added two of them to like replace them. So in total, there are 12. So nobody had any like favorite ones. Okay, well, so that was all the myths. So now we're gonna go to the Kahoot. So Joshua said that the three-headed beast was the favorite one. When he gets the apples, yeah, that's pretty cool too. So we're gonna start with the Kahoot. So like the three last times, go to kahoot.it on your browser, enter the game pin that will be on my shared screen in a few seconds, enter your nickname and wait for the game to begin. So that is kahoot.it. So, start the game pin. So, here is the game pin. Shahui says, my Kahoot isn't working for some reason. What do you mean not working? Because I can help you if there's any problems. Can you tell me why it's not working or how it's not working? six people in the Kahoot, guys. Let's 
try to participate because you guys are thir uh, are 15, so. This is also the last coat, so I would like you guys to participate if you can. I mean that um, there, you guys are 15 to participate, like are listening to this class today. That's what I meant. There are only six, so. Invalid code. Maybe try closing the browser and then reopening the browser. There should be space, like, I didn't close the thing or anything. So maybe, like, um, close your browser and then restart, enter the game pin. So the game pin, you don't, there's no space and you don't have to put a space like between the one and the eight. Okay, so eight people. We're gonna wait one more minute just in case people, yeah, I see your name, good. Nobody wants to participate in the code. Oh, and just to tell you guys, today there's like um there's like a double point. So some questions are worth double the points. And just a reminder that the faster you answer the questions, the more points you get. So I see that nobody is joining, so I'm just gonna start the game. So the first question is, what is the name of the group of creatures that were often called the Hounds of Zeus? Yeah, so it is the Harpies. <laughs> Joshua said he forgot. That's okay. This was like a pretty like difficult question too. So what is the answer to the myth, uh, the riddle that we just talked about? So everybody got it right. It's a human. So Chimera is the hybrid of which three animals? So the hybrid of a lion, the body of a lion, the head of a goat, and the tail has a snake head at the end. Okay, so what is the particularity about the gorgons? Yeah, so if you look into their eyes, you will turn to stone. So true or false? 
blood taken from the right side of the gorgons can revive someone. So is it the right or the left side? So it is the right side. The left side can kill someone. <laughs> okay, so this question is double points. So who are the three gods that help Perseus defeat Medusa? Yeah, so it is Hades, Athena, and Hermes. Hades gave him the invisibility helmet. Athena gave him like, um, what is it called again? Like the, the, the thing to catch um, the, like the little, like a stick to catch Pegasus. And Hermes gave him like the sandals. Okay. So the white and black sails in Theseus' myth meant life and death. Yeah, it is true. Okay, next question. What is special about Pegasus except the fact that it can fly? Because that's pretty obvious. Yeah, so it's the only creature fast enough to escape Chimera's flames. True or false? Hercules' two last labors were added because he had help and had accepted payment for two of them. Yeah, so it is true. So one of the, the labors, it was the one to defeat the, the lion, the, not the lion, um, the ser uh, li lion of serpent. So um, his cousin helped him and the one he accepted payment was cleaning the stables. Okay, so. This is like a, there's not right answer. I just had to put like a right answer because um, who asks for it, but it, it's really like your personal opinion. So did you like the classes? So a lot of people said yes, so that's good. If you said not really, well, sorry for you, <laughs> but I can't really do anything about it. So let's see. Aaron, good job. You're in third place. And second place is someone whose nickname is Tissue. And in first place is Greek God. So that's pretty good, guys. And then we have our runners up. So that was it. Um, that's the Kahoot and all I had for you guys. So if anybody wants, like, to give, I don't know, feedback, have any questions, we can do that. And in like four minutes, you guys are starting your next class. So does anybody have any questions, any feedback? Nobody? What is Hercules' cousin's name? Um, it's Io. Io something. Wait, let me go see. I remember I said it in the video. I don't have that good of a memory either. Wait, right over here. The battle was hopeless until his nephew, Yolas. Yeah, so it starts with an Io, but you pronounce it Yolas. 
And somebody put a question in the Q and A. Oh. <laughs> Nobody have any other questions? No. Oops. So you guys can have a three minute break before um, Caden comes and you guys will have your next class. <laughs>